I'm Brent Stewart. Thanks for watching. Tiffany D. Rao, PhD, is the owner and principal consultant of Rao Consulting and an expert in bioprocessing and a Six Sigma Master Black Belt. Her international technical and managerial experience extends from development to post-commercial CGMP manufacturing. She's very familiar with single-use technologies and centrifuges, including the complete Unifuge line. Tiffany, how are you doing today? I'm doing great, Brent. Thanks so much for having me today. Well, thanks for, thanks for doing this with us. So tell me about the evolution and breakthroughs in bioseparation systems over the last 20 years. Well, the, we've gone through leaps and bounds of evolution on single-use systems. A decade ago, we only dreamed about being able to uh, run centrifugation and other single-use operations. In the centrifugation space, for instance, everything was either stainless steel um, or we had to move into depth filters, for instance. So the fact is, is that back then we had to think stainless steel. And while our processes were moving towards single use in our upstream space for primary recovery, we just didn't have very many options until different centrifuges that are single use, such as the Unifuge family had actually come to market, which allows us to have a lot more flexibility and really be able to think about our process differently. So what segments of the biopharmaceutical industry have benefited or can benefit from single-use technologies, including centrifuges? Every segment can benefit, Brent. The reason is, is that the fact is, is that we are miniaturizing our processes. We want to be able to, to run closed. So while um, previously, you know, we were thinking about different ways of doing processing and such, we now can do everything in the small single use. Let's take one particular category, cell therapies. Um, cell therapies um, is a new and evolving marketplace for us. It's a very exciting one, but it's one where we don't have um, a terminal sterilization step in our process. So there's no way to clean up the process. We need to run from start to finish. So from biothaw, if we're using um, an allogeneic version, or are from patient material, of course, if it's fresh, and run sterilely from start to the time we put it into the vial or bag for the patient. And you can imagine being able to run in a single use environment that's totally closed allows us to do a couple of different things. First of all, it ensures that our product is, is sterile. We can also run at in different environments, right? So we don't have to do the process in a biosafety cabinet, for instance. We can bring that out into a different environmental classification, which gives us flexibility in where we're running our process. And also it de-risks everything for the patient. So we really want to make sure we're doing that. And so single use centrifugations technology, such as the UF Mini, this is just an example of the UF Mini. There's 300 milliliters that can go through this. So you can imagine um, for cell therapy, even if it's personalized or um, if we're doing development work, um, this is the perfect size, right? Because it's small, it's disposable, it comes pre-sterilized uh, with all of the documentation that we need to do GMP manufacturing. So we can use this in GMP or we can actually use this for process characterization and monoclonal antibody production or mRNA or many other different uh, modalities for products. What are the key advantages of single-use centrifuges versus incumbent technologies, stainless steel, depth filtration, etc.? Well, let's break it down. Performance, process, environment, and safety, all very key things. First of all, we want to be able to have the best performance for our products. We want to be able to process quickly, right? Um, and also make sure that we don't do any damage to our, um, to our products, whether that's a cell or whether it is an antibody or a different type of protein or a vaccine, right? We wanna make sure that we're doing no harm. We also wanna talk about what the, the process looks like as well, right? Um, because we have an operations point of view as well. So we have the science 
and we also have operations. And being able to have a process that is easy to, to put into our manufacturing facilities where we can do changeovers quite quickly because many of us are not producing the same product month after month or year after year. We're doing uh, product changeouts and then being able to be able to turn these pieces of equipment over quickly. We also want to make sure that we have all of the appropriate documentation and such and single use centrifugation technologies as well as other technologies. This is critical. We also need to think about environmental aspects as well. Um, this is from a wide range of thoughts, right? Of course, we have our energy concerns, but we also have um, waste concerns as well. The fact that I can do an entire operation in a small uh, centrifuge disposable instead of using, you know, 20 banks of debt filters is huge. Just imagine being able to throw this away or one that's a little bit larger um, that would be on the unifuge pilot instead of having to bag all of these step filters, which are as can be as tall as a person, right? If you take a look at some of the traditional aspects, for instance, a stainless steel centrifuge, just imagine having to go and clean that with CIP and SIP, all of those different aspects. So that brings in that safety point of view, of course, having to minimize the amount of waste and such, but also part of that operational excellence. So for the different aspects of it, they're all intertwined, right? Mm -hmm. I want to make sure that I have the best process, the best technology to meet my needs. I want to be able to run it in a safe way and make sure that I have operational excellence for my, my R&D facilities all the way up to my GMP manufacturing and then my second generation processes. It's key, right? Mm -hmm. And single use centrifuges and other types of technology like this is key to being able to deliver those life improving and saving products. Yeah. So tell me how how does the Unifuge line enable biopharmaceutical companies to achieve their goals to provide life improving and saving products to the market? One of the challenges that we've had traditionally with centrifugation is the scalability. Um, you know, of how do we scale disk stack centrifuges and other technologies um, in that centrifugation space? Um, you know, using, and I'll give you an example of, of this. Um, if I'm going to use a system like the Unifuge Pilot to do a cell therapy, because I want to be able to wash the cells and I also want to be able to change the buffer as well. And my product is the cells. You know, I want to be able to do this quickly without damaging the cells. And so early on in the development phase, people may use benchtop uh, centrifuges. Well, that's that's not really great because they don't scale very well for manufacturing, whether it's to the cell therapy space or whether it's to our very large centrifuge centrifuges that are in stainless steel facility. It's a known challenge. But being able to have development tools which can scale, such as the UF Mini, um, this allows us to do that work earlier rather than later. We don't have to wait till we scale up to find out what our challenges are from our primary recovery. We can design all of it um, from the start. It's very key. We also want to make sure that we're taking that data earlier and earlier, right? Because we're going to leverage that later in our process when we do formal process characterization to get ready for our late stage uh, filings, uh, late stage development products, and then uh, onto our filing. So being able to do DOEs and those types of things earlier is really key, right? Also being able to do predictive modeling. So being able to have the same piece of tech technology, whether it's in my pilot plant with the Unifuge pilot, or if it's in my manufacturing plant using the U2K, um, and you might say, Tiffany, the U2K is too big for me. And I'll go, that's fine. Um, that's for very large processes. We really wanna make sure that the technologies are growing with you. It's the same thing in the, the upstream space, right? We wanna make sure that our bioreactors are able to be scaled so that we're always doing development um, in a vessel that works and we can transfer it and collect information. So that's a huge benefit is being able to do research and development just like we do in manufacturing earlier rather than later. So in science, I know they don't have crystal balls. 
uh, but if you did have one, what would you say the future of cell separation looks like? Well, it's a very bright future because cell separation is going on a journey, just like our processes are going on journey. Who would have ever thought that we would be able to do the cell and gene therapy processes that we have today, five, 10 years ago? So we're really working on matching our cell separation technologies to meet the needs of the process and vice versa. Thank you very much, Tiffany, for sharing your insight and your expertise in this area. And thank you for watching.